gets away well but uh, can Ramon hang on to yes he can keep the place going but watch Daniel Renison around the outside suddenly Gerard Olifir in the mix there as well in third place looks looking for a way through on the inside of Daniel Renison surprise speed that uh, Gerard Olifir has suddenly found Zandri Weitz oh no it's not Zandri it's deals for market has moved up into fourth place Zandri running in fifth Ramon Langban starts opening up a little bit of a lead. Second place man, Daniel Rennes. Gerrit Olifir still in that third place. We've got six laps left in the race. Having opened up a bigger lead over a Daniel Renison. Not sure if the person in the car that's sitting directly opposite me, if they can switch their headlights off, please. You're shining your lights directly in my eyes. I can't look at the cars down the back straight. Four, four laps left. very comfortable in, in control. Daniel Renison doesn't seem to have an answer for him at this stage. Gerrit Olifir still in third place, followed by Niels Vermaak. Zandri Weiss running in fifth. Thank you for switching your lights off. As soon as you switch your lights off, somebody else switches theirs on. Certainly starting to grow now as the white flag comes out. Has Ramon Lundman done enough to win the final in the 2.1 modified class? Down to the last lap. Down the back straight for the last time. Well, it's going to be a very popular win here for young Ramon Lundman. Coming home in first place. Beating Daniel Renison, Gerrit Willifir finishes just ahead of Niels Vermark. Vermark gets fourth. Fifth place going to go to the Friedman's electrical car, Zandri Vase. She'll cross the line now in fifth place. Lots and lots of vocal support for Roman Landman. It has been a great drive by him this evening. Congratulations, young man. Great performance. Winning the 2.1 modified class here tonight. Uh, Nadia Rotenbach can do from the second row. We saw flashes of brilliance her, of the flashes of brilliance from her in race number two. Let's see if she gets it going. We're going to come down to the start and 
touch in there between Bianca Westrat and Anuska Landmann. Nadia Rotenbach slots into third ahead of Chanel Fantonda. Mustn't let Bianca Westrat get away because once she gets out in front, normally just stretches that lead. Nuska Landman late on the brakes, carries a lot more pace to get Nadia Rotenbach right behind her, and then Chanel Fantonda running in fourth place. Then it's Mara Liebritz and Lisa Forslu. They make up the top six. Nadia Rotenbach late on the brakes as she closes in on the back of Anuska Landman's car. Five laps left in the race. Oh, lots and lots of speed from Anuska Landman as she overdone it and it allowed Nadia Rotenbach to close up on the back of her. Anuska Landman certainly pushing incredibly hard. He's going to start applying the pressure to Bianca Westrad now. But uh, just watch Nadia Rotenbach in third place, keeping there, just keeping them in her sights, ready to pick up any pieces. Four laps left in the race, see the different race line. Bianca Westrad goes a lot wider, and Uska Landman hugging the apex as they go through into the corner. Once again, carrying a lot more speed down the main straight is Anuska Landman. Closes up on the race leader now. Bianca Vestra's car just seems to get out the corners onto the straight a lot better. Two laps left, or soon to be one lap. Let's see the white flag. Going to be coming out shortly. Soon as Lisa Foslu comes through, the white flag will come out. So we're about to go into the last lap of the race and Ruska Landman closes in once again. Oh, just getting the car a little bit out of shape. Different line once again they go. Uh, they take as she goes down the back straight. I think and, uh, B. Funny Mai has done enough. Bianca Vestrad is going to take the race win. I don't think Anusha Langban is going to get close enough. She gets it out of shape once again. Makes Nadia Redbuck stand on the brakes. The win goes to Bianca Westrat. Anusha Landban gets second. Nadia Rotenbach is third. Fourth place goes to Marley Britz. Oh, no, sorry. Fourth place goes to Chanel Fantonda. Fifth goes to Marley Britz. And across the line now in sixth place goes Lisa Forslu. Number 62 car of Bianca Westrat. Not only did she win Nuit for Nuit, but she has won the Pink Rod class as well. So great performance from her. She certainly knows her music and she certainly knows her way about around Victory Raceway as well. Great drive in there from the funny by Bianca Vestrad in the 62 car. Of Christine Power having made the trip down from East London. Fantastic to have all of our out of town visitors joining us here this evening. Oh, but it's Rafa Jabeer that gets away well, but uh, Christine Power has got into the lead. Jabeer slots into second. Quaid DeLange is third, followed by Ty Geddes in fourth. Six laps of action in the junior hot rod final. Christine Power having got the start that she would have liked. Rechot Jubeir is second. Quaid Delange still third. Delange is late on the brakes. Tiger is in fourth place. Rechot Jubeir has a look through on the inside into the lead he goes. Christine Power just overdid it there for a moment. 
went too deep into the corner. Has it allowed Quaid De Lange to get through as well? But the Rafa suddenly opened up a nice little lead over Christine Power and Quaid De Lange. Tide is still going well. Down in fourth place, got three laps left. They're going to have to certainly make a plan to catch up with Rafa to be out in front. Been a very, very solid performance so far from the 133 car of Rechard Jobe. Great De Lange starts in right behind Christine Powers' back bumper. Two laps left. And while they're involved in their little fight there, that's allowing the race leader to open up a fairly sizable gap now. The white flag about to make its appearance. We start the last lap of the race and Rechard Jebeer looking fairly untouchable out in front. Still anybody's guess as to who could get second and third. Oh, he has a look through on the inside as Quaid Delanga. There's contact between the two of them. Still touching, touching, but uh, Christine Power hangs on to take second. Quaid Delanga gets third. Our race winner. Rechard Jubeir, the 133 car, coming through in fourth place. Car number 175, that's tight getters. Congratulations, young man. Very, very good drive there. That is one of the best drives that I have seen from Rechard Jubeir in the 133 car. A beautifully turned out car in the colors of J JK Racing. Exciting affair. Peter Victor and Vincent Fenter, very similar cars on the front row of the grid. I see we're missing the second of the Extians, the number seven car of Tien's Extian that's not out there. As we go racing, and couldn't ask for a better start there from Peter Victor. Got slightly wide, did give Vincent Fenter a little bit of a, a look through on the inside. But uh, not managing to capitalize around the outside goes Andrew Mayring. Woo! Nearly makes contact with the wall. How oh, the hell? The guys missed him. I don't know. But he has spun himself onto the infield. It looks like he is going to manage to get it going again. He gets back onto the circuit. Peter Victor leads. Vincent Venter second. HJX. And then it is Donovan Kotzer followed by Jean Rustoff. Mayring in the 51 car finds himself a lap down after the spin. He's got Peter Victor, our race leader, right behind him. Oh, once again getting the car snaky out of control. Peter Victor just needs to go around the outside of him, blasts it around the outside. Vincent Fenter goes through, still in second place. Third, it is still H. Day Extian. Followed by the 68 car of Donovan Kotzer. Then it is Jean Rustoff. Rustoff, not in the car that we are accustomed to seeing him in. We will win. Uh, come around, we'll have four laps. Four laps left in the race. Peter Victor driving off into the distance. Vincent in second place. Third place it is HJ Extian in the 27 car. Followed by Donovan Kotzer. And then Jean Rustoff.
left up to fourth position. As the white flag comes out now, we start the last race of the American Saloon final. And what a dominant final it has been. Peter Victor completely, completely untouchable. Checkered flag beckons him now onto the main straight. He comes. This is going to be a very, very popular win again. Peter Victor takes victory at Victory Raceway in the V8 American Saloon class. Vincent Venter gets second. Third place comes now to HJ Extian, the number 27 car. Fourth place will be Donovan Kotzer waiting for him to cross the line. He comes across the line now. I must say that has to be one of the most clinical performances that I have seen from Peter Victor from the moment the lights went out in the first heat. He has just been completely untouchable. Great driving from a true champion. Congratulations to Peter Victor. V8 American Saloon, the winner of the night. As soon as he's off the circuit, the Hot Rods will be coming out for their final. Kelly Darling brings them through at a nice slow pace, makes them ensure that they're all backed up nicely in a pack. Waiting for the lines. Uh, that's, oh, Johan Skuman gets away very well. Skuman is away with it, but he and Aylwood are on the outside of Kelly Darling. Manages to keep it there. Can he keep it there? Yes, he can. Down the back straight they go. He needs to close in now. Kelly Darling jumps on the brakes a little bit earlier, forces him to go wide. So Kelly Darling hands on to that, gives him a little bit of a nudge out of the way. So uh, Kian Aylwood certainly making his intentions known. Oh, some more contact there. Emil Bortma runs into the back of him. Wow. Kelly Darling fighting off Kiel Aylwood. What it is doing is allowing Johan Skuman just to absolutely break away. And you to see the gap that he's opened over the second and third place cars. Emil Bortmann still running in fourth. Sean Goff in fifth. Four laps left in the race and I don't think anybody's going to get anywhere close to our race leader, Johan Skuman. Kelly Darling still fighting off the hard charge in young Kian Elwood. It's allowed Emil Bortmann to go through. Bortmann makes contact with him. Kian Aylwood certainly been in the thick of things tonight. Lots and lots of potential. He has had a steering wheel in his hand from a very, very early age. And he certainly knows his way around Victory Raceway. Two laps left. And Johan Skuman sailing away to an easy victory. Kelly Darling still running second, Kian Ail with third, Emil Bortma fourth, Sean Goch in fifth place. On to the last lap we go now. Oh, Kelly Darling overdoes it, has it given Kian Ail with a chance to go around the outside. Aylwood has once again, oh, he's overdone it, oh, helps. Oh, no, that's unfortunately. Checkered flag goes out to Johan Skuman, but Kian Aylwood getting it wrong, tagging the back of Kelly Darling. Kelly has had some terrible luck over the last year, and uh, unfortunately ends up, uh, she got tagged, and into the, into the wall she went. But no doubting who the winner was. I will fight about who was second, third, fourth and fifth, but uh, no doubt who the winner was. Johan Skuman absolutely dominating. You see there, Kian Elwood just getting it wrong, overdoing it, tagging the back of Kelly and pitching her into the wall.
final showing how quick the car is. Just needs to keep it going in the right direction as Tian Willifan leads him around. Fun gets away well. Peter LaRue slots into third. Chanel Fantonda moves up. She's in fourth with Andrew Murray up into fifth. Jason Brink is sixth. Kenzo Barnard is seventh. Nine laps left in the race. Tian Willifont already started to open up a nice little lead over Jason, uh, over uh, Wesley Slubbett in the 83 car. Uh, Kenzo Barnard retires the 57 car. Slubbett, Peter LaRue, Chanel Fantonda, Melindry Marais, Jason Brink, a little bit out of control, that's allowed Melindry Marais to close in on her. Chanel Fantonda has a look through on the inside of the 777 car of Peter LaRue. that are vying for oh, there goes Peter LaRue has gone far too wide Chanel Fantonda goes through Jason Brink follows suit oh around the answer Chanel Fantonda gets it all wrong onto the infield she goes a little bit of a shortcut for her so change of positions up into third place is Jason Brink Andrew Murray is fourth, fifth is Peter LaRue, Chanel Fantonda running in sixth. We've still got four laps left, and this is 1660s. Anything can happen, and normally does. Opened up a nice, comfortable lead over Wesley Slubbett, but the action happening right behind them. Jason Brink under lots of pressure from Melindry Murray. The 92 car of Melindry Murray, she's had a great evening as the white flag now comes out car they battled with a misfire but they've certainly got that sorted out but coming through now to take the uh, the white flag last lap we go Tian Willifant, Wesley Slovitt, Jason Brink, Melindry Murray, Peter LaRue and Chanel Fantonda still going added hammer and tongs for position five and six but coming through to take the checkered flag it's been a master class act from Tian Willifant, Wesley Slovitt will get second Jason Brink crosses the line now, followed by Melindry Murray. And then it possibly, Chanel Fantonda, possibly just having got ahead of Peter LaRue.
then see Nico De Bruyne, Nico missing from the action. Benito Kotze, Gerard Kotze. Oh, there's Nico De Bruyne on the line, back row of the grid alongside Freddie Smith as the lights go green. And Vian Jordan under immediate pressure from Pierre van der Berg. Let's see, it's going to be a sprint down the back. Pierre van der Berg with the advance, the longer legs of the BMW. Oh, this is going to be an exciting one. He gets pushed a little bit wide. Van der Berg with his teammate Willem Fleur behind him. He has a look on the inside now. Maybe that's a better option. Shows his hand. On the inside, Viet Jordan, all defensive at the moment. He has got the hard charging Pierre van der Berg. Looking for a way left, looking right. Willem Fleur has gone too wide. That's allowed Helton Gilmer to go through. Gilmer slots into fourth place. He has got uh, Kyle Daniels just ahead of him. Willem Fleur gets a car sideways once again, but watch the action in the front. Vian Jordan having to pull out all the stops to keep Pierre van der Berg. This is going to be a bruising final. Van der Berg should have the run now into the bottom turn, but Vian Jordan keeps him honest. We've got Nico De Bruyne now going to come into the mix. The first of the back markers that's going to get left. Vian Jordan leaving Pierre van der Berg, lots of space. Great driving from the two of them as they make their way past Nico de Bruyne. Carl Daniels gets past, Elton Gilmer gets past. Willem Fleur looking for a way past, he gets a car sideways onto the infield, he goes. Grant Cooper has to go and do a quick dance and get out of the way of the sideways Willem Fleur. Right, we try and find our race leaders once again. Vian Jordan and Pierre Jabeh. Pierre Jabeh, Pierre van der Berg. There's been absolutely nothing in it between the two of them. Saki Palm goes on to the infield. I've never seen two cars so evenly matched. Pierre van der Berg pulling out all the stops trying to get past. Vian Jordan is now broken away from them. But. Uh, now he's going to be in the thick of the back markers as they start lapping the rest of the field. Still got eight laps to go. So <laughs> this is going to go right down to the wire, I'm sure of that. But Vian Jordan has been very, very clever. Some great defensive driving from him so far. He's going to try and use the back markers to his advantage. Here, Van der Berg has a look through on the inside. Nico De Bruyne is blocking them. They're slapping De Bruyne for the second time as Saki Palm retires the 121 car. Down the back straight they come, almost neck and neck once again. Willem Fleur leaves a bit of a gap. He's gone deep. But if so, as Pierre Van der Berg couldn't capitalize, we've still got six laps. This is an absolutely riveting final. Last race of the evening, the heavy metal final. 20 cars to start with. It has been an epic, epic adventure. Willem Fleur, are there some team tactics coming into play there? Willem runs very wide, lets Vian Jordan through. Here, yeah, Van der Berg goes through now as well. Oh, Freddie Smith smoking badly as he passes us. Still got four laps. Here, yeah, Van der Berg attacks once again. There's going to be a massive, massive roar if Pierre van der Berg can get ahead of Ian Jordan. Jordan certainly making Pierre van der Berg do all the hard work. Forcing him left, forcing him right. Keeping him totally honest. We've got three laps left in the race. Coral van Aistien retires the Nissan Maxima. 
Thunderberg has a look once more on the inside. We're down to the last two laps of the race. Oh, is there contact there? Nico De Bruyne gets lapped for the third time. Freddie Smith ahead of the two front runners now gets the car sideways onto the last lap we go. This is where it's going to all come down to. Vian Jordan has got the car nicely placed. Freddie Smith forces Pierre van der Berg to run very wide. I think that's game over. Checkered flag is going to come out now. This has been an epic final. Brilliant driving from Vian Jordan and Pierre van der Berg. Absolute, absolute brilliant driving. Third place going to go to, I think it's Elton Gilmer gets third, followed by Kyle Daniels and then Neville Ellard. <laughs> Vian Jordan, a lack of spin there from him. Well, we promised you lots and lots of action, and we certainly provided. Congratulations to every single driver that has taken part here tonight. Put on a brilliant performance. Pierre van der Berg, you can take a bow. Brilliant driving. But let us salute the winner of what has been an absolutely epic final. Vian Jordan taking the race when the, the 377 car Folks, thanks very much. It's been an absolutely epic evening. Uh, one minute past 12. We wish you all of the very best. Those of you that are having an extended long weekend, enjoy it, keep it tidy, keep the rubber on the road. From me, Brendan Kelly, it's goodbye until next time.